Human beings are sexual creatures. There's no denying this. There is a theological component of it as it concerns the Bible's standard of what proper sexuality is, but there's also a pastoral side as well. People wanting to feel a place of being loved and wanting to be intimate with another. If a gay or lesbian person came into your congregation or fellowship, what would you do? Would you immediately brand that person an abomination and see that they were forced out because of their lifestyle? If you did that, in all likelihood, you would be perceived as pushing out someone from the kingdom of God, perhaps without even giving them a chance to explain who they are, what their value system is, and what their experiences have been, particularly regarding their lifestyle. And what should not escape our notice is how while there are people we all know who would immediately brand a gay or lesbian as an abomination, the fact is is that statistically there are many more things happening in the religious world that are heterosexual in orientation, which are just as much an abomination and that will hardly merit our attention. In the controversy over homosexuality, conservative, liberal theology, there are different sociological factors which necessarily have to be probed. Why do some people practice a homosexual lifestyle? Now, indeed, there are things in the scriptures, there are things theologically which have to be weighed. But is it solely because, as some might conclude, rather simplistically, that these people are just turned over to sin and ungodliness, when in fact there are certainly heterosexual people who are turned over to sin and ungodliness in their own sexual activities? I think it is fair and reasonable to put out there how more sensitivity, attention to detail, and care is needed by those of us who, yes, we affirm that homosexuality is an abomination before God, but we don't want to be unnecessarily turning people away from hearing the good news. A good news which is to transform men and women from within, fill us with God's Holy Spirit, and provide an intimacy and union with the Creator that is infinitely more important than any union a human being can have with another human being. A number of months ago, uh, in a presentation, I referenced this book called After Evangelicalism by David P. Gushy. And this is, I have to say, one of the most challenging books I have read in recent times. And it deals with all of these progressive sorts of social matters that conservatives... Uh, and especially fundamentalists, tend to just brush off to the side. Oh, it's all society's fault. Uh, it's all the media's fault. This is just an abomination. Uh, Satan, Satan, you know, Lucifer, Lucifer. Uh, the demons, the demons. And very infrequently will you see uh, people recognize, um, you know, I'm a conservative believer. I believe in the uh, final authority of Holy Scripture and Yes, I believe that there are uh, terrible perversions going on sexually, both among uh, homosexuals and heterosexuals, but I think we need to pay a little more attention to how we just can't come off as being very rigid. We have to take into consideration why people perhaps are making the choices that they are making. What are some of the factors that go into a particular lifestyle 
in order that we might be more effective with the presentation of the truth, the presentation of the good news to those who, yes, we believe are in severe error. So as I have sorted through some of the sociological factors regarding homosexuality, what different liberal examiners like Gushy and others have said, the three things that really jump out at me. Uh, the first one is the huge debate over, well, these people were born that way. Homosexuals were biologically born homosexual with uh, same-sex attraction. So there's really nothing we can do about that. Yet, there are people, certainly in a different uh, church associations, uh, different denominations, who will claim that, okay, perhaps some people are born with a biological predisposition towards same-sex attraction. That does not mean that they have to act upon it. And so there are people who identify as gay or lesbian, but they consider the Holy Scriptures to say, no, that is a sin, and thus I, as a gay or lesbian, biologically have to remain celibate if I am going to live in compliance with Holy Scripture. A second factor, and this comes from uh, some of those who are theologically wanting to defend a homosexual lifestyle gay marriage. They may claim, well, we cannot ask homosexuals to abstain from sexual intercourse when heterosexuals in the faith community are freely going to engage, even if in marriage. Okay, well, my immediate response to that is, what about unmarried heterosexuals? Unmarried heterosexuals, biblically, unless they are married, have to abstain from sexual intercourse. So this idea that we can't control ourselves sexually, we have to have a sexual union with another uh, human being, whether we're heterosexual or homosexual, married or unmarried, that goes beyond, far beyond, uh, what the Bible communicates. The teaching, certainly in historical Christianity, uh, that I was raised with and that I continue to adhere to is you are either involved in a monogamous marriage relationship, one man or one woman, or the other option you've got is you remain celibate. You don't engage in sexual relations if you are unmarried. Which leads us to our third factor. Why is pairing off viewed as somehow being the pinnacle of completion? Because that is something that I would have to say conservatives have widely contributed to. Why is pairing off viewed as the pinnacle of completion. Heterosexual singles in much of today's body of Messiah are not always treated with the same degree of equity or respect as married couples are. And frequently, as can be seen in some religious settings, which is the reason why we're having so much of this debate today, those who cannot find and acceptable or a suitable opposite sex partner are then, well, they come to the conclusion, well, you know, if I can't find the right woman, if I can't find the right man, you know, maybe I need to find a man or maybe I need to find a woman. Maybe I'm gay. So the fact that there's a huge emphasis of, well, you're not complete until you find your spouse does force some people who cannot find an acceptable opposite-sex partner to look for a same-sex partner. We do not value the single estate as we ought, even though the single estate is the estate of the Messiah who we serve. We cannot have a overly simplistic fundamentalist, homosexuality is an abomination 
mindset without any concern for the various factors that guide people, direct people, entice people into that kind of lifestyle. And indeed, in order to be fair and balanced and reasonable, we also have to factor in the many, many, many heterosexual sins that are taking place, which often don't even get a proverbial slap on the wrist.